Hi, this is Math 111 OLC, winter 2012. We're going on with Unit 3. Today we're going to talk about Section 3.3 entitled Problem Solving Using 2x2 two two Systems. And of course that means some word problem type applications of the techniques we learned in Section 3.3 Solving 2.2 two two Systems. All right, basically there's three types of problems I'm going to talk about in this section. The author's uh, text uh, includes a few more types, but I want to restrict it to three different types. Basically, we're going to have interest type application, a mixture type application, and a fluid type application. I'm going to start out with example five. It's a worked out example in the book, example five on page 251. So please turn there now and refer, re familiarize yourself with the problem statement and we'll wait for you to come back. Please pause now. Alright, I'm going to read the problem out right here. Example 5, interest income. To protect, to protect against a major loss, a financial analyst suggested the following plan for a client who has $50,000 to invest for one year. Alco development, it's a high yield of 12% per year, but it's a little risky. And the second one they mention, certificate of deposit. It's insured, safe, but with a relatively low yield at 4.5% in annual interest. If the client puts some money in each investment and wants to earn 3600 in interest, how much should be invested at each rate? All right, so what we've got is uh, we've got 50000 to invest. into these two accounts. One is the Alco account. That pays off 12% interest. And we've also got this bank type CD, which is quite a bit less interest, but it's a little safer. So it's kind of a trade-off. How much am I to invest in one or the other of these accounts to earn 36% interest. Write that down. We want to earn, that's our goal, $3,600 in interest from these two accounts. All right, so how are we going to split it up? All right, what I'm going to do is probably, and that's, that's probably the first thing you do in these any word problem situation, you should write a clear let statement. I'm going to say let x equal the dollar amount you're going to put in the account at the 12% rate. That's in the Alco account. And I'm going to let y be the dollar amount that you put in at the 4.5% interest, namely in the CD account. All right, so to use a 2x2 two two system, we're going to have to generate two equations out of this given information. And I think I, we can do it somewhat easily. Well, first thing I know is that the total amount invested has to equal $50,000 in dollars. All right, so that's pretty easy. I know that X, whatever X is, when I add it to Y, I have to get $50,000 because that's how, that's how much I am investing. All right. What other equation can I get out of this information? Well, I can say something about the interest from these two accounts. Now, remember, we want to earn 3600 in interest from both of these accounts. So what I'll say is 12% interest from the Alco account plus 4.5% interest in the CD account has to equal $3,600. Oops, not thousand. $3,600. All right, so let's look at the second equation. The second equation is a little more involved. This represents the interest from the 12% account. This represents the interest from the 4.5% account. And this represents the total interest from both accounts. All right, that gets us a two-by-two two system. Uh, 
which may be a little bit cumbersome to solve. Well, if we don't panic, I think we'll, we'll be okay. Uh, I think I can easily use the substitution method here. Because this first equation is very easily solvable for one or the other variables. All right, in equation one, I'm going to solve for y. All right. So y is then 50,000 take away x. Okay. What I can then do is take this expression for y, plug it into y in the other equation, and that will result in one equation with one variable that I should be able to solve without too, too much trouble. Let me go ahead and make the substitution. So 0.12x plus 0 0.045 times 50,000 take away x has to equal 3,600. All right, now I got to be careful here about applying my distributive law. This is a product in this second term. I'm going to have to multiply both of these terms by 0 0.045 in order to free up that x variable to be solved for. Well, 0 0.045 times 50,000, that's 2250 minus 0 0.045 times negative x gives me a negative point, of course, negative 0 0.045x. All right, so performing this indicated multiplication gives me this uh, better looking equation. I'm going to subtract 2250 from both sides. And then these two terms are like terms. I can just add or subtract the x coefficients as needed. And I'll get 0.075x then equals 1350. I think the worst is over. Now if I just divide both sides, and of course you'll need a calculator for this one, divide both sides by 0 0.075, I get a nice even number of 18,000. 18,000 what? $18,000. $18,000 what? $18,000 invested at 12% in the Alco account. Okay. So... I'll box that. Well, how much is in the other account? Well, then y is, of course, 50,000 take away x. You know you've got 50,000 total to invest. And if I subtract 18,000 from 50,000, of course, I get 32,000 invested at 4.5% interest, and that's the CD. So I'll box that too. So, again, logically equivalent to things we've done before in section 3.2. Basically, we're wrapping it in a uh, real life or word problem type scenario. Let's try another one. Here's another type. This is going to be example 7. Again, these examples are worked out in the book page 254. Let's familiarize ourselves with that problem statement. Please turn there now and read through the problem statement. And I'll read it here. Example 7. Popcorn. A tin of jalapeno flavored popcorn sells for $36, while the same size tin of cheddar cheese flavored popcorn sells for $24. How many tins of each type of popcorn should be used to create 10 tins of a jalapeno cheddar mix that can be sold for $27 per tin? All right, what are we going to do here? Uh, first thing I'm going to do is write a, uh, a clear let statement. Basically, we've got two types of popcorn tins, jalapeno tins and cheddar tins. And we know, want to know how many of each type of tin to produce, right? Uh, I'm going to say let x equal the number 
of jalapeno tins. And of course, I'll then let y equal the number of cheddar cheese type tins. Okay. Now, what are we told about these tins? Well, we're told something about the number of them. Uh, we are told that we have 10 tins of a mix. Okay. So right away, I know that x plus y has to equal 10. Alright, so I can easily squeeze one equation out of that given information. And now we are also told something about the value of these popcorn tins. Well, we are told the jalapeno flavored sells for $36 and the cheddar cheese flavor sells for $24. Alright, well, I can do then is say, well, the value of the jalapeno tins. Well, there's going to be $36 per tin times X tins plus the value of the cheddar popcorn tins. And I've got, well, they're $24 each times Y of them. And we are told, right, the final mix is worth $27 per tin. So I've got 10 tins, each valued at $27 each in the final mix. So this is the jalapeno value, 36S, plus the cheddar value has got to equal the total or final value of the mix. All right, so I can rewrite this system a little more clearly. X plus Y equals 10. And 36X plus 24Y equals 270, right? All right, now I suppose we can use a substitution method. Our author chooses to use the elimination method here. All right, what the author does in this example, let me make a note of that, use elimination method to eliminate the y variable. Yes, I could have just as easily eliminated x, but the author chooses to eliminate the y variable first. Basically, what he's going to do, if I number these equations, number 1 and number 2, I'm going to multiply the top equation through by negative 24. and leave the second equation alone. And I haven't affected the solution set at all by doing algebra things to both sides of one of the equations. So what I'll do now is add these two equations and get an eliminated y variable. I'll get 12x on the left equals 30 on the right. This looks better already. So x equals well 30 over 12. We're going to get a fraction out of this. Um, reducing this, I get 5 halves or 2 and a half. T 2 and a half. All right? Let me just pause there. I'll say 2.5. 2.5 what? Remember x was the number of tins. Well, what was the number of tins x specified? It was the tins of the jalapeno popcorn. Okay, so let me circle that. I've got two point two and a half tins of the jalapeno and then I can go really to any of these equations above. I think the simplest one is x plus y equals 10. If I know x plus y equals 10 and if x is 2.5 well 2.5 plus y equals 10 and of course y equals 7.5. Now, so y is 7.5, 7.5 what? 7.5 tins. Tins of what? 7.5 tins of cheddar popcorn. So, two and a half jalapeno tins 
and seven and a half cheddar tins will result in the mix that I desire. Okay. All right, that's example seven and page two five four. All right, I want to look at example eight now. It's also worked out in the text. Let me get a fresh screen here. It's going to be example. Oops, what have I done? That was close. This is example eight on page 255 in our text. And let's read through that example together right now. Water treatment. A technician determines that 100 fluid ounces of a 15% muriatic acid solution needs to be added to the water in a swimming pool to kill a growth of algae. Okay? So we desire 100 ounces at 15% purity. If the technician has 5% and 20% solutions on hand, how many ounces of each must be combined to create the 15% solution? All right, this is a classic uh, word problem type scenario. I always like to, in these liquid mixture type problems, I always like to draw what I call a vat analogy. So basically we're saying this. We've got a certain amount of a 5% solution. We've got a certain amount at a 20% solution. Those are already pre-mixed. Well, what we want to end up with is a solution that's 100 ounces at a 15% solution. All right, so if I mix something that's a little too weak with something that's a little too strong, I want something somewhere in between. So that looks reasonable. But the idea here is I don't know how much of each. Well, again, I'm going to need to write a let statement here. I'll say let x equal the amount of the 5% solution. And again, I'll say it's in ounces. All right, so I will want to find out why. I'll let Y then be the amount I'm going to mix at the 20% solution. And again, in ounces. All right, what I'm going to do now is squeeze out an equation here. Well, actually, two equations, one and two. Well, I know for sure that X plus Y has to equal the 100 ounces. I've got x ounces and y ounces of either solution and they both have to add up to 100. All right. Now, what I'm going to do now is say, well, the amount of pure acid in this vat, let me replace that question mark with an x because that's going to be x ounces. I'll also replace this question mark with a Y, representing Y ounces. And I'm going to say the pure acid in the 5% vat plus the pure acid amount in the 20% vat has to equal the pure acid in the final solution. So what I can say then is this is 5% of X plus 20% of Y has to equal 15% of 100. Okay? Again, let me highlight this. This is the pure acid and the 5% VAT plus the pure in the 20% vat has to equal the total amount pure in the final vat. Okay? 
All right, so there is a two by two system. It doesn't look too bad. We do have some decimals to deal with. And I believe our author uses the substitution method here again. I can use a substitution to solve for both X and Y in this two by two system very easily. Well, of course, if I'm going to use the substitution method, I'm going to look at example, or sorry, equation one. I'm going to claim that solving for y in this first equation, I'll just subtract x from both sides and I get y in terms of x. y equals 100 minus x. Now I will take this expression for y, plug it in for y in my other equation, and I will get a resulting one equation with one variable that I should be able to solve fairly easily. So making that substitution, I'll get 0.05x plus 0 0.20 times 100 minus x equals, well, 100 times 0.15. That's just 15, right? All right. Similar to the first one we did today, I'm going to apply my distributive law on this expression. In between, I'll get 0.05x plus 0.2 times 100. That's just 20, right? Minus 0.2 times x is just 0.20x equals 15. I'll combine like terms. These are both x multiples, so I can just subtract coefficients as needed and then I'll subtract 20 from both sides so I'll get minus 0.5x equals mi I'm sorry minus 0.15x equals minus 5 and if I divide both sides by minus 0.15 I get x equals positive 33.33 ounces, 33 and a third ounces. So I'll round off to the nearest thousandths decimal point. That should be plenty. All right, so that is my the amount of the 5% solution. That's what we defined X as. Circle it. Well, what's y going to be then? Well, that we know that x plus y has to equal 100. All right, so if x is 33.333, I can easily plug that into the first equation in my system. And of course, I get 66.667, so roughly 66 and two thirds ounces of the 20% solution. Circle that. That's a decimal point right here. Make that a little clear. Okay. All right. So again, standard type mixture type problems in the two by two vernacular. All right. So I did one of each type of problem and there's a, a sampling of eight or nine uh, ty similar type problems, one each, one or two each in each of the three categories of problems I gave to you today. All right, this concludes uh, Math 111 OLC Unit 3, Section 3.3, and that's all for today.